Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another devlog. This week, I want to talk about saving your game's state across sessions using Phaser.js and Supabase. For context, I'm building a productivity app that's also a game that you can play. And if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can see once I have a finished version that you can play test. Okay, so if you want to save your game state across sessions, the first thing that you're going to need is a database. I'm using Supabase because it's awesome and easy to work with, but it doesn't really matter where or how you host your database. It just matters that you have one. I'm not a big fan of over engineering stuff, so I like to keep it simple and just optimize it later. So what I did is create a new column in my users table on Supabase. You can see it here. It's called game underscore state, and it is the JSON B type. Once we add that column to our users table in our database, it allows the Supabase use user hook to return that information with the rest of our user details. So that information is inside of the user details object that we're passing here on line 68 when we instantiate the first scene of our game engine. Inside of our preloader, we don't do anything special with this data. We just grab it in our create function and then grab the user details off that data object and spread it into a new object when we're starting our main menu scene. We grab that data and attach it to an object that we're constructing onto the scene object itself so that we have access to that data inside of our update method. And inside of our update method is the first place that we actually do something with this data. You can see that I've split this data into two different objects that we're going to be passing into our test scene on line 57, where we split it into a user object and a game state object. There's no real specific reason into doing it this way, other than I had already created the user object and I wanted to keep the game state object separate just for the way that my brain is organizing the code. Inside of our test scene scene, we have another init data object that starts here on line 33. And you can see below that we're just typing out that object. Then on line 45, we're creating a default value for that object. This is kind of duplicative code because we're already creating default values for this object inside of our main menu scene. But here, this just makes TypeScript happy. So it stops yelling at us that some of these values might be undefined by creating default values for them inside of this scene as well. So with all that, we've got the plumbing to consume data from Supabase. But the other half of making this feature work is also being able to send data up to Supabase and make sure that it's saved for future sessions when we log in again. I went back and forth on a couple different ways that I could do this, but I eventually decided on backpacking on the logic that I had already built out for updating my UI in the game. So whenever I fire a player health changed or player coin collected or a map change event, I decided to also emit an event called update game state. And then I will send some data along with that and handle that event in the same file where I'm handling my game UI. It's not exactly UI related, but it is an event and we can polish it later. For now, the goal is just to get it working. Here on line 68, you can see that when that update game state event is fired, we also call the this.handle update game state function and pass in this, which is the context for this scene. So let's go take a look at this function, handle update game state. We've jumped up to line 30 here. This is an asynchronous function, which is important if we want to send data to Supabase. We're going to have to await that call. We're going to pass in um, one argument, I think, which is our state to update. That is an object of some number of keys, which are strings and values, which could either be strings or numbers. We're going to create this dot init data to an object where we're actually we're going to update this dot init data, which is being tracked on this scene as well. So basically, we're going to reassign this dot init data here on line 33 by spreading in the current value of it and then reassigning the game state to the current game state plus the state that we're updating. And when we use this spread operator with this state to update variable, it's basically going to overwrite any matching values with the new value here that we're spreading in. Then on line 37, we're going to create our call to Supabase by just saying await update game state. 
and passing in the user ID and then that game state that we've just updated. Update game state is a function I built just for this, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, here we are in the file where I've got a lot of my Supabase client related helper functions, and we're looking at the update game state function on line 512. We are console logging it on line 513, which is always helpful. I recommend doing a lot of console logs as you're tracking data throughout your application, especially with something like this. This is a pretty simple function. I'll try to be brief here. Um, it takes in a user ID and the new game state that we're going to update. We're going to await a call to Supabase from our user users table. We're going to update the game state column where our ID is equal to our user ID. All right, I've just booted up the game. We're gonna to try to do a little demo here. You can see I'm in the outside world and I've got five hearts and 14 coins. So I'm gonna cut down some of these bushes and I'm gonna go look for a heart or a coin to try to update our UI, okay? We found a coin here. You can see our coins went from 14 to 15 coins. Now, if I walk inside this house, you can see the map's gonna change. And this is our little house area, but we still have 15 coins on the top left-hand side. That's our UI updating. So if the user closes the browser or they refresh here, the whole point of what we've done is to maintain that game state across sessions. So if I refresh here, when we load back in, I should still be in the house and should have 15 coins. Looks like it's working as intended. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. If I did, drop a comment down below, let me know, and I'll try to slow it down next time. But I hope that you found this video insightful or helpful in some way. And as always, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.